Hey everyone, welcome back to the new module and this is the module where we talk about the malware threats. This is our module 8, malware threats. Now in malware threats, we'll uh, follow a module flow starting with the concepts, then APT concepts, then we will talk about the Trojan concept, then virus and worm concepts, then fireless malware concepts, then we have the malware analysis. So malware analysis then we have the countermeasures and anti-malware software anti-malware so these are the eight topics that we will follow and I will go through in this module so starting with the concepts if you enjoyed the content of the video don't forget to like and share the video and subscribe to our channel. So let's talk about the concept. So what is malware? So malware is a malicious software. And malware is made up of two words that is malicious and software. That both combine and make malware. Now that damages or disable your computer system and give limited or full control to your system. There are the different types of malware. So types of uh, malware most of you are familiar with this name so let's talk about what the different type of malware we have the trojans we have the backdoors we have the rootkits we have ransomware adware then normal viruses worms spyware botnets about the botnets, we'll learn more about when we'll go into the uh, denial of service. There, we'll talk about the botnet creation of it and what are the difference between bot and botnet. Then, cryptos. Now, there are different type of malwares and different ways for malware to uh, enter into the system. We can say through the message. Instant, they fire. They can transfer the files, right? So, in instance, uh messengers applications such as facebook instagram and all then portable hardware hardware such as media and removable devices usb drives so portable hardware browser and email softwares these are the ways uh, like how and malware can enter your system so ways malware can enter insecure patch management rogue or decoy applications then we have untrusted sites or freeware web applications so untrusted sites are downloading files from the internet then email attachment then we have uh, network propagations, file sharing services such as NetBIOS, FTP and all. Then uh, Bluetooth or wireless networks. These are the ways uh, through which our malware can enter. So these are the ways that we have through which a malware can enter your system. Now, what we'll say is, uh, like see, if we have this, these are the common ways through which we, a malware can enter. So it can destroy a computer, right? So we'll learn about what are different type of malwares, how to protect yourself and all. And normally what the common techniques attacker uses, uh, they use black hat search engine optimization, uh, ranking malware page highly in the uh, search result. Normally you have seen when you search for any of the toll free number. Most of the time uh, you will get a a scammer on the call so that is done by the search engine optimization 
uh, or you can say person can do a social engineering uh, click checking so that is social engineering where they will send a link uh, uh, of the innocent looking web pages but they have the viruses spear phishing attack where they uh, send uh, attachment to your email so that is a spear phishing malware malware string so that is the embedding malware in the ad network that display across the hundreds of legitimate high traffic sites so that is a mal advertising or mal advertising uh, drives by download drives which also contain some of the viruses exploiting flaws and all spam emails these are the ways uh, how they can get into your system common techniques which they use so there are the different type of components of malware if you can say so uh, the components of malware can be cryptor which encrypt your file downloader They have the injector, then packer, then malicious code, then we have the obfuscator. About the obfuscator, so it's a program that uh, conceals its code and its purposes via various techniques and thus uh, it makes hard for security mechanism to detect so those are the uh, things that is the malware concept that we have talked about let's talk about the apt and trojan concept so starting with the apt apt is advanced persistent threat advanced persistent threat now this APTs are defined as a type of network attack uh, where an attacker gain unauthorized access to your target network and remain undetected and they are uh, basically hard to find in a network if you are using any antivirus and all if they enter you in a network while using this APT uh, it is hard to find now the main objective behind this attack is to obtain the sensitive information obtain sensitive info and uh, the information that is uh, obtained during the apt attacks are different information that we can have it such as user credentials so if a person is using apt threats that is advanced persistent threats so the information that he or she can get is user credentials classified documents network info and transaction info then credit card information that is the information that he or she can get with the apt and there are some of the characteristics that is behind the apt or advanced persistent threat is uh, such as objective so they have most uh, objective before doing this such as sen sensitive information uh, they should have the resources amount of knowledge tools and technique they have the skills and method they should have and these are the main things that should be notified basically have it in the user mind before doing the apt attack that is advanced persistent threat again and they they have the life cycle so if you if you talk about the advanced persistent threat persistent threat they have the life cycle so the life cycle start from cleanup goes to preparation goes to initial in, uh, intrusion then it goes to expansion then it goes to persistent so what is the meaning of persistence by the way it's the meaning of persistence is maintaining access then search and exfiltration then it go to cleanup so these are the life cycle which they have to follow starting with the cleanup so it covered track the main undetected then preparation that is defining a target researching about the target organizing team building or team tools test for detection and all initial intrusions that is uh, deployment of the malware establishment of the outbound connection they, they have to go with expansion so expanding access obtaining credentials persistence maintaining access and then they go to search and exfiltration where they exfiltrate data that is uh, collecting the main information that they want 
so that is about the apt now let's talk about the trojan so many of you have heard about trojan horse let me open the trojan horse so in the old age uh, they use a horse uh, which is look like a good horse and uh, they used to get inside with the horse to a big castles so the soldiers think it's a gift or something for the king but inside there are the troops such as uh, we can see this example so uh, this example include we have a virus which is looking similar to normal files such as pdf or any image and inside that they have the virus so when extracted inside the computer when used it will perform its action so what is trojan it's a program which the malicious or harmful code is con uh, con contained inside the apparently harmless programming or data in such a way that the code get controlled and cause damage so that is the trojan and trojan get activated when the user perform predefined actions and they create a convert channel communication channels and there are different type of trojan if you see and say so why attackers use trojan so to delete or replace critical operating system files create ddos attack right blasting email messages disable firewalls creating backdoors there are some of the major things that they use and the, they are the common ports used by trojan so common port used by trojan so one most of the major port that they use is port 21 and trojan is blade runner or dark ftb then they use port 22 that is ssh red or linux rabbit so ssh red let me write it more clearly ssh red and linux rabbit port 23 that is elite wrap 68 for ms pi so that is the most of the common ports which is used by trojans to uh, get inside and that the trojans attack and they use the sports and then we have the types of uh, trojan so if you wonder like what are this names so let's say we, we have the port 21 open we will use this trojan dark ftp to get inside it and uh, exploit it types of trojan so we have the remote access trojan we have the backdoor trojan we have the botnet trojan rootkit trojan e-banking trojan they are the major trojans now let's uh, do a practical of a M nj rat so this is a practical where we talk about a tool nj rat and this tool uh, is used to gain control over a victim machine so let's do that so let's go to windows 11 machine and let's get inside now let's get to the tool so for that i will open my file go to the e ch tools uh, okay CS tools, then the malware threats. Then we have the Trojan types inside the Trojan type, remote access Trojans, NJ Rat. And then we have to just click over here. Now, there's a GUI uh, in the task that uh, we that is appearing with the default port number 5552 has been chosen. Now, just click on start click on builder now after the builder appear we will enter the IP address of the uh, target Windows 7 which is the host right now so we will enter the host IP address target we will do later on dot one dot eleven then what we have to do is we have to just go with the next right so after entering just go with the build click on build Make sure your registry startup is uh, checked. Click on build. Now save it uh, to any of the destination that uh, in the desktop. Let's save it on a desktop. Such as test 
Dot.exe or any name which you want and save it now we have saved the file in the desktop right uh, now once we have uh, created the file uh, we have to just go with the file now now what you have to do is you have to copy the target and let's paste into the server so this is this PC and I think so each each folder is shared with all so let's paste the target over here the server file over here so let me minimize the Windows 11 so this is a server file let's copy this and paste this over here now we'll open our Windows uh, server 2022 Let's open the Windows Server. We will paste the password for the administrator. Now, let's copy the file. So this is the way I am sharing the file. You can share it as you want. Let's paste the file and run it. So let's suppose you are sharing a game folder with your friend and he or she just click on it to run it. Now let's see back and let's go back and see our application that is NJRAT. Now if I open here see we have a pop up over here that, that server has the file. Now if I right click over here we can see we have the manager. So now in the manager we have the file so you can see we have the C file, we have the D file and all. Uh, you can just go with the anything like if you if I want I can just double click over here I can delete system file that is uh, Windows file I can right click over here delete it and do anything also I can see the process manager over here so let's click on the process manager right so here we have the process manager let's wait okay so these are the file I can just right click on the file kill it restart the process so that is a way how we can do it also we can go with the registry files from here we can see the registries we can have the remote shell over here let's see uh, let's, let's wait for the connection to be completed it will take time uh, let's type the command let's try if it's working over here or not manager remote shell okay so let's write the command over here so here we have to type the command sorry for that I am used to pro rat so let's type the command on the keyboard okay it's working okay it's working over here also so let's type the command that is I config slash all any command you want so we have the IP configuration of the machine uh, we can create that DIR we can do anything which we want we can have the remote connection also if I right click over here remote desktop so here we have the remote connection of the desktop I can click over here so this is for the view that we have right so I might have I should have a mouse option over here let's wait for it more desktop let me okay over here we have the options uh, let's have the mouse option over here so see we can uh, we can control remotely so if I open and go to my remote server over here you can see uh, there is the menu bar opened over here let's see let's wait and see what's happening over here let's see we have a menu bar over here so if I go to my Windows 11 over here and type any message in the search box, it should be displayed into a Windows machine. So if I type something from here, let's take, I will type hello. Let me enable the keyboard also. Hello, this is pi that labs. So this should be available here see 
also what we can do is we can chat uh chat with someone so let's say this is the hacker and i hacked you i will open a chat box over here open chat and your nickname hacker yo if i type yo over here let's see let's send it and let's open our windows server see we have a chatting over here uh please leave me alone and if i go over here in the windows 11 and see what we have with the message see it's that easy so that is about the nj rat how we can uh go with it what are trojan types uh you can go with the pro rat you can go with the smeef so there are different different tools which we have that attackers use to create it so that is about the uh hacking and that is about the using of ng rat now what we will do is uh we will create a file which is having or uh, which is undetectable by the antivirus program so we have created a text uh, tech test.exe right let me close this So I'll open the web right now. I will go to virus total. Okay. Let's go to google.com and search it. Google.com. Okay. It might have a Google Chrome over here. Here's a Google Chrome. Let me try and search for the virus total okay net is running over here let's go to virus total and let's upload a file so let's go to desktop and here is the file let's upload it and test it what we have so let me com confirm the upload so you can see uh, we have already got the messages like it was trojan it is having the bad uh, review over here and virus has been found over here right so till now 56 of 69 uh, antivirus software has said that it is vulnerable so let's wait for the result okay so we have the result over here which is saying that 58 of 71 virus antivirus software has said that it is malicious now let's hide that for that we will use a tool that is uh, Swazi Cryptor it's used to encrypt it so let's go to our new volume CES tool then let's go to malware threats then we have the cryptos Swazi Cryptor let's open the application let's open the file go to desktop here is the file click on startup mutex disable uac right now what we'll do is uh, we'll save the file so we have to click on encrypt so right now we have done with it let's click on encrypt and save it to the desktop yep let's save it so we have uh now save the encrypted file over here let me close it and let's open the chrome again and see the rating here's our file encrypted file let's open virus total let's choose the file let's upload it see we don't have the uh, reading of that much let's wait for it it is detected but again see only few antivirus has detected it as you can see this all antivirus says it is right let's wait for the result see we have the 42 out of 70 so it is a good score 
so that is about like how we can get the access to a computer and how we can get the remote action with the trojan horse or trojan virus you have seen how dangerous the trojan is uh and it is more now normally uh how to infect a system using trojan is you have to create a new trojan employ a dropper or downloader employ a wrapper crypt it like we have encrypted so use with cryptor or any software you have to encrypt it propagate the trojan deploy the trojan on victim machine and run it creating a trojan uh, is also easy part let's try to create the trojan uh, let's open our machine and go to your viruses folder that we have now over here there's a virus maker gps my virus maker click on it now if i open anything over here let's say i want to uh lock the screen crazy mouse and let's create it so virus has been created now if somebody just click over here let's see what what will happen you can see i'm not using the mouse over here and the mouse goes crazy here's my mouse as you can see but the mouse goes crazy so for that i have to restart the machine or i have to restart the lab i cannot you do anything i cannot close it so that is about the uh, virus creation that we have created and exploited our own machine right now and uh, right now we are using a servers or network share to share the file but normally what we do is uh, we share it over the internet while we're hosting our own server and all we can uh, use usb drives to share it so that is about the uh, sharing of the file of the trojans and we can do more with the trojan like we can also have the remote access we can have the uh, screenshot we can do anything we can exploit as much as we want so that is it for the trojan part if you enjoyed the content of the video don't forget to like and share the video and subscribe to our channel okay so let's talk about the viruses and worms so we're going to talk about the viruses and worm concepts I hope you are enjoying the sessions uh, till now, the videos. If you have any doubt, you can contact Planet Labs for your doubts. Or you can join our Telegram channels for it. So about the uh, viruses. So a virus is self-replicative uh, replicating programs. A virus is a self-replicating program that produce its own copy uh, by attaching itself to by another program computer boot sector or documents so a virus generally transmitted through downloadable files injected uh, infected disk fla flash drives email attachments those are things and if we have uh, viruses so what are the characteristics that we can see so the characteristics of virus is infect other program transform themselves encrypt them themselves alter the data corrupt files and programs those are the major things they corrupt usually a different program that is uh, attached to it so that is the main thing if we have the viruses uh, installed in our computer and there are the different uh, stages of virus life cycle so there is a life cycle for the virus also stages of virus life cycle so start from design application launch detection incorporation execution of damage routine so those are the stages of uh, viruses life cycle where they start from the design development of virus code using programming languages or softwares the application the virus replicate for a period of time within a target system and then sp spread itself launch uh oh yeah we talk about 
the virus is activated when the user is user performs specific actions and detection uh, where the virus is identified as a threat in by infective uh, threat infecting target systems in cooperation where antivirus software developers assimilate defense against the viruses execution of damage routine where users install antivirus update and eliminate the virus threats those are things now normally uh, viruses are merged and sent to the system like uh, we do previously using the ng that we encrypt it so we will merge it with the file and send it to the system and uh, normally what you say uh, normally we have the viruses installed in our computer because normally we use uh, pirated windows pirated software with us so that is why we have the virus installed in our system so we have the viruses type so so there are lots of virus we have the system a boot sector virus file and multipartite virus macro and cluster virus stealth or tunneling virus there there are the most uh, known virus then we have the polymorphic viruses we have the metamorphic viruses then we have the overwriting file or cavity viruses so we can write it cavity viruses so those are the main viruses now what about the uh, like uh, file viruses that we have is multi multipartite virus right so about the multipartite so is also known as multi-part virus or hy hybrid virus which combine the approach of file infectors and the boot record infector and attempt simultaneously attack uh, both the boot sector and executable files or program files uh, so when the virus infect the boot sector it will turn affect the system files and vice versa that is about the multi-partite virus about the micro virus it in it uh, infect the microsoft word or similar application by automatically performing the sequence of actions about the cluster virus so it infect file without changing the file or planting additional file they save the virus codes to the hard drive and override the pointers to the directory entry about the stealth virus or tunneling virus so they hide from the antivirus program by actively altering and corrupting the services called interrupts while running and that is it for the viruses type about the polymorphic virus uh, we can say such virus infect file with the encrypt uh, with an encrypt copy of the polymorphic code already decoded by the de decryption module so general use of the mutation engine is enabled uh, in the polymorphic code and polymorphic virus modify the code for each replication to avoid detection about the metamorphic so metamorphic virus are programmed in such a way that they rewrite themselves completely each time they infect a new executable file uh, and about the cavity virus so they rewrite it like some programs have empty spaces in them cavity virus also known as space fillers overwrite a part of the host file with a constant usually nulls uh, without increasing the length of the file uh, while preserving its functionally so it's maintain a constant file size uh, when infecting uh, allow the virus to affect uh, to avoid detections that is about the cavity virus now we have already used the different type of trojan horses uh, that we have now let's talk about the ransomware about the ransomware it's a type of malware that restrict access to computer system file and folder and demand an online ransom payment so if ransomware is installed in your computer it it will encrypt all the files it will encrypt it uh, and to decrypt it they will ask a ra ransom normally they use uh, bitcoin for the transactions that is because it is untraceable and mo most of the famous ransomware software is uh, E C H E C H O 
or somebody says it's a zero RAIX is a new ransomware that specifically target Linux devices and we have the Samsung so these are the two ransomware applications and Samsung is a notorious ransomware that has infected millions of unpatched server by employing the RSA2048 asymmetric encryption technique about the encryption technique we will know when we talk about the cryptography that is about the ransomware normally when your computer is infected when you turn it on uh, you will uh, have the barcode appear in your screen that's a scanner or something like your bitcoin address code and they want the ransom for that now creating of virus is easy as we have previously done using the J, uh, js virus maker so jps virus maker so we have previously created the virus and infect the machine those are the things and also uh, we have the free antiviruses if you go with any of the free antiviruses remember it's all fake and it will destroy your system whether it's your mobile phone or your computer about the worms so worms are the uh, malicious program that independently replicate execute and spread across the network connection so the main thing about the worms is it independently replicate so an execute and it will ex uh, spread so attacker use warm payload to install backdoors in infected computer which turn them into zombies and create a botnet and then they will uh, use it for the DDoS attack for the different computers so there's the difference between worms uh, and viruses so what are the major difference that we have about the worms and viruses so virus uh, virus infect a system by inserting itself into a file or executable files it uses files and a worm is uh, using basically a system a vulnerability if a system is vulnerable then worm will be inserted and replicated so worm infect a system by exploiting a vulnerability in an operating system or application by replicating itself so they are the independent it might delete or alter the content of the files modify files but uh, typically a worms does not modify any file modify any files or store data and a virus cannot spread to other computer unless an infected file is replicated and sent to the other computer but a worm can replicate itself and spread using irc outlook or other applicable mailing program after installing in the system and worms are uh, spread more than viruses we have the worm maker so we have the internet worm maker thing this application is used to create the worms and that is it for the virus and worm concepts let's talk about the fileless malware it's a very interesting topic and then we will talk about the malware analysis so about the fileless malware it is also known as non malware and it infects legitimate software applications and other protocol that exist in the system to perform the various malicious activity uh, normally it leverage any existing vulnerabilities to affect the system if you have if you have any existing vulnerability in your system it might use that also and it reside in the system ram so it reside the system ram uh, and it inject malicious code into the running process such as microsoft word flash pdf javascript powershell any of the file in the task manager it can inject the uh, malicious code so why people use the malicious uh, fileless ma malware because it's uh, a stealth in nature stealthy in nature so hard to detect live of the land so it's exploit def default system tools uh, you can say so that the 
person who is using the system may not be able to detect the malware if you want to exit the process from the taskbar and you you have all the default system listed over there you cannot guess it and it's trustworthy so it uses tools that are frequently used and trusted so it uses trustworthy tools for the in the user or in the client side people can send the uh, malicious fileless malware through phishing email legitimate applications native applications in fact through lateral movement in fact malicious website registry manipulations uh, memory code injections and uh, script break injection those are the things how pe person can exploit it and uh, there are different type of you can say uh, what categories to enter into victim machines and uh, if we talk about the categorization like how fileless malware threats uh, are so there are the three type based on how much evidence they leave on the victim machine so there are three type of fileless malware type one if you talk about the type one so no file activity perform no file activity perform it means this is a type of malware that no, never require writing a file onto a disk an example of such infection is uh, receiving malicious packet that exploits a vulnerability in a target host and that automatically install a backdoor about the type 2 we have indirect file activity so this type of malware achieves fileless presence on the target machine uh, using files or example uh, for example we can say an attacker can inject a malicious powershell command into the wmi repositories to configure a filter type 3 required files to operate in general we can say Normally, to exploit a fileless malware, it doesn't require a additional file to be uh, to be hidden inside it. For example, if we have the Adobe, let's say this is the virus uh, which we created, so it's a word file. So fileless malware doesn't require; it's just a script, and it will exploit when it's get inside the system. The point of a entry, if we can say so, memory exploits, malicious websites, phishing mails, malicious document, they all inject code. Then they see for persistence, such as uh, they can see for different applications in the registries, Windows management, and schedule tasks. Then they achieve the object by reconnaissance. Uh, we can achieve the object by doing the reconnaissance through the uh, virus, depending on the motive what we have. So we can do the credential harvesting, we can ex exfilter the data. So those are the ways which we can do um, or you can, we can use the fileless malware. So let's talk about how we can launch a fileless malware through documents exploit and uh, memory exploits. So let's talk about the document exploit first. So this is uh, what a uh, fileless malware will do. So normally uh, for the exploit, we are, we are talking about the document exploit, so it, it will require the documents so a victim open a docs file now document runs into malicious macro so macro virus uh, is the virus that is for the microsoft applications so it runs malicious macro virus then macro launches javascripts or any of the applications code so launches javascript then this malicious script exploit powershell to run payload and contribute the infection so malicious script exploit powershell to run payload payload that is how basically a victim is tricked into downloading a uh, malicious document so it's a type of document exploit normally fileless malware comes uh, with the code so how launching fileless uh, malware through an in-memory exploit work is uh, for example we have eternal blue that's a virus name eternal blue it will exploit the in-memory SMB service message block then we have the 
lsass.exe explode so it's a file that is inside the memory we can do the script based injection also so we for that we have to load a we have to load a loader consisting of the malicious scripts and file then it's a code so codes need to be downloaded then it's placed in the memory and then it execute the code directly from the memory that is how a fileless malware can run through the script we can also uh, do this with the help of phishing so we can email some link and victim open the link then the website uh, scan the victim machine for unpatch flash then the flash open a uh, powershell uh, for passing instructions to the command line and powershell download malicious script from the command and control server once downloaded the script containing malicious payload is executed in the memory then it auto start a registry key is created for storing the malicious code in the victim system then the payload can exfiltrate the data and perform the other malicious activity that is how usually the fileless malware work tools which we have for the fileless malware to create a fileless malware is uh, divergent now divergent is a type of fileless malware that uh, depend mostly on the registry for execution and storage of configuration data so from this we can do that now about the uh, malicious uh, malware analysis let's talk about the malware analysis malware analysis so before going to the malware analysis let's talk about a term what is ship dick computer ship dip computer now the ship dip computer is generally referred to the analysis of suspect file incoming message or sector for malware now ship dipping a process tasks include running user group permissions and process monitors they run ports and network monitor they run the device driver and file monitors they run registries and kernel monitors those are things that include in ship dip computer so we have the antivirus for the mal malware analysis for malware analysis right so my what antivirus will do it will uh, get the information of if there is any spyware so my uh, antivirus system includes our uh, anti-spyware anti-trojan anti-spamware anti-phishing and email scanner right so those are the main sensors that we have in the antivirus now malware analysis is the process of reverse engineering a specific piece of malware to determine the origin functionality and potential effect of a given target of a ma malware so if a malware file is sent to you how you can analyze that and find the origin point so there is the type of malware analysis that we have type of malware analysis static and dynamic let's talk about the static so static analysis also known as code analysis so it involves going through the executable binary code without executing it to have a better understanding of the malware and its purposes about a dynamic malware analysis so it's also known as behavior analysis so it's involved executing the malware code to know how it interacts with the host system and its impact on the system after infection so other things so according to most of the researchers they go with static one because with going of the dynamic one it can harm your system also it is recommended both uh, we can go with static and dynamic to perform and obtain a detailed understanding of the functionality of the malware and how the malware is uh, infected over the system so normally malware analysis procedures include uh, allocate a physical system for the lab so you have to allocate a system which contain nothing so you have to create lab install a virtual machine inside that install a get guest os like we have installed windows 7 and windows 10 that is a guest os operating system 
isolate the system from the network by ensuring that NIC card or like network interface card is in the host only mode in the VMware. Now simulate the internet services using such tools such as INET SIM and all. Disable the shared folder guest location, install the malware analysis tool, generate the hash value of each operating system and tool and copy the malware over the guest OS. By doing this, we can uh, start the phase of testing the malware. So this is the uh, like the term which we are talking about. It's a pre-test or preparing. Preparing for malware analysis. Now the procedure for preparing is done, right? So what's up next? We will do the static malware analysis or dynamic. So in the static malware analysis, we see for file fingerprint, local on online malware scanning, performing string search, identifying packing and uh, methods, finding the portable execution file, so that is the P information, identifying file dip, dip, uh, dispensary and malware disassembly. Those are the things that we do in the malware. So there are different different things you can go with the file fingerprinting and all that's a developer part of thing Or right, you can go with the online malware scanning that is your virus total you can go with it it's a great tool where you where we have uh, a file scan by many of the antiviruses then uh, we identify the packing so we can see the pid for it normally what we do is uh, we normally go with the dynamic uh, you can dynamic you can say dynamic procedures right so let's try to create and do a malware analysis so let's do a dynamic malware analysis for this let's create a malware let's me let me open the lab let me open the windows 11 let's open the windows 11 so let me enter the password over here Here's the password get inside the system okay now first of all let's create a virus again so for creating the virus we have to use the nj rat let's go with malware threats uh, then we have the trojan type we are going to create a malware let's go with nj rat let's open it I will start it and then we will go with the builder again the same procedures that we have now over here we will give the IP address of the Windows 11 machine so that is our host machine so show the IP address for the host machine is 10.10.1.11 host machine IP address so let me copy it 10.10.1.11 we have provided the host machine IP addresses now uh, we can rename the IP, uh, name of the virus so I will go with the blatant name for because it's just a testing you can go with any then I will click on build and save this on anywhere anywhere we can save it so we are going to save it on the same directory right now with the exe extension so we have created the tool now what I will do is I will open my server that is 22 and here we have the 2019 so I will open the 2022 Windows Server let's open it so let me copy the password now let's open and uh, use our file exploit it so here is our file here is our system hacking our malware threats Trojan type and here I have saved the file I'll copy this paste it over the desktop I'll run it now let me go to Windows 11 see if there is any connection over here no I didn't see, it, uh, see any so let me okay we have the connection server here 
now what I will do is uh, let's analyze the process on Windows Server again so this is infected right so let's open the tool and let's analyze it for this we will use a tool that is known as TCP view it's available on the, over the internet you can download it so let's open it now here the malware threat malware analysis tool then we have to go with port monitoring it is a dynamic port monitoring tools tcp view let's open it let's agree now over here as you, as you can see we have different different options let's click on the local port so here's the local port so when we click on it uh, we have we can see uh, observe the protocol that is running on the different ports. So we click so over here as you can see we have the trojan.exe which is running over here. Now if you can see over here uh, we have the trojan.exe. So we have the malicious application that is running on the server. Now also you can see the remote address over here where it is responding. So that is the IP address of my uh host machine so this is the ip address of my right now the user victim machine and the tcp uh, we can see the host machine which is uh, responding back you can kill the process so if i right click over here kill kill this process yes let's see let me terminate every every process so kill it okay okay we have killed the main process so okay that is it for the system okay, that's for the network if we go back to the computer and let's check for the connection if we have the connection or not so as you can see the connection is gone right now now this is a way you can view all the processes on the machine and stop the unwanted or malicious process that may affect your computer and if you are unable to stop a process you can view a port on which it is running and add a firewall rule to block that now we will close the tcp view and uh, let's analyze this process on windows 7 using the curve pro ports right now i have uh, closed the process but let's run it again and analyze it with the port so let me close it let me run it again let me open my windows 11 okay again we have the connection now let me go back to my windows server now we'll use the curb port let's open the application over here now it will display all the list of open TCP IP and UDP ports on the machine and if we scroll down over here at the end we will have trojan.exe which is running right and here is the remote port number and here is the IP address of the remote machine now you can also view the properties over here if I right click over here and go with properties so here we can see all the properties which is mentioned over here the username of the person which you created so username and where the person saved the file and also here you can see it and also you can kill the process of the selected port so if i right click over here and uh, i can kill it from here kill the process of selected ports this is a one way of doing the monitoring and clearing the process this is how we do the malware analysis i hope you like the process how we can uh, do the dynamic malware process uh, how we can do it if you go if you go with the lab practical if you purchase the ceh kit with it so you might have different different lab which you can try it's amazing but for the training purposes we have to show the main labs and the easiest one so that you can do the normally the time taken one by your own because it's con it concludes everything 
and it's easy and documentations are available over the ceh portals you can go with it so main purpose of the training is to explain you how we are going with the terminologies what are different things and how to deal with it uh, normally the theoretical parts are asked in the exam so that's why you are doing the training right now that is it for the fileless malware and malware analysis if you enjoyed the content of the video don't forget to like and share the video and subscribe to our channel let's talk about what are the trojan countermeasures which you can take and go with so avoid opening email attachment these are the countermeasures that we are talking about right now so you can avoid unknown senders and block all unnecessary ports so you can see the list of ports which are mentioned over your operating system and the ports which are not required you can block those you can avoid accepting program transfer by instant messaging so avoid taking files from the instant messaging platform such as social media we can say or we have different different platform where we have the option of sending files so you have to avoid that and hard week a default uh, configuration and disable unused functionalities including the protocols and services monitor internal network avoid downloading and executing applications from untrusted source and install patch and security update security update is important and restricts permissions within the desktop environment to prevent malicious applications from being installed run host based antiviruses these are the trojan countermeasures which you have to take now for the backdoors uh, most commercial uh, thing that to use is antivirus products you can uh, educate the user not to install the application and download from untrusted sites avoid untrusted software use antivirus tools and inspect network protocols and traffics and same uh, it applies for the same for everything about the fileless malware countermeasures that you have to take is to remove all the administrative tool and restrict access through windows group policies or windows app locker disable powershell and vmi when not in use uh, you can disable the macros and only use digital sign trusted macros uh, disable pdf readers to automatically run javascripts those are the major things that you have to go with and also regularly update and patch applications and operating systems run periodic av scans antivirus scan now anti malware software you can go with camp casper sky so that, that is suggested by the ch so casper sky right so it's antivirus software so casper sky internet security you can go with it you can go with mcafee you can go with bit defender malware bytes those are the things that you can go with bit defender mcafee you can go with avast northern but remember go with the paid product don't use free antivirus those are the viruses uh, which are the fake antiviruses so always use those and for the file fileless malware detection a detection you can use alien vault this is the name of the tool alien vault usm anywhere this is a tool that provides a single uh, unified platform for threat, threat detection incident response and compliance management so such as you can say it's a seim tools that normally security analysts use you can go with mcafee endpoint security and that is it for the tools and that is it for this module see you in the next module where we talk about the sniffing